Uh, we made an incredible deal, but after COVID, I don't even bother talking about it because the devastation that that caused for the entire world was too much to bear. I will ensure that Joe Biden does not receive four more years in 2020. Can't do it. Our country could not take that. And I say that not in laughter. I say that in tears. Our country could not take four more years. It can only take so much. It's all very fragile to start off with. It can only take so much. In 2020, I received the largest number of votes of any sitting president in history by a lot. And we will do it again, but with even more votes this time. Many have noted that huge gains we have made with Latino voters, and I believe we will set even greater records with this crucial vote in 2024. The Hispanic voter, the Latino voter, has been unbelievable. Great people, very entrepreneurial people, and they want security. And everyone thought when I did the wall, I built the wall, and they thought, oh, that would hurt me with the Hispanic vote. No. It helped me because they understood. They wanted safety, they wanted security, they, and they understood the border better than anybody else. So they were amazed that we started that trend and now we're continuing with that trend. You look at what we've done in Florida, what everybody's doing now in Florida and Texas, along the border in Texas, won every single community. I won every single community. Governor of Texas called, great gentleman, just got reelected, and uh, he said to me, I'd like to talk to you for a second. Why? Well, he said, you've done something that nobody else has done. You've won every single area along the border. It's the longest since Reconstruction. I said, Reconstruction? I guess you call that the Civil War? That's what I call it? That's what I call it. And that was US, former U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump's address from his Mar-a-Lago estate, where he has announced his candidacy for the 2024 presidential run. Now, Trump announced his candidacy for the 2024 presidential run, saying that America's comeback starts now, also saying that he had built a strong economy, and all that the incoming administration had to do was to sit back and saying that he had decisively dealt with issues of immigration, American energy independence, and that America was are doing China in every aspect. For more on this, we're now being joined by Susan Tehrani from New York. Susan, thank you so much for joining us. We've just heard uh, former U.S. President Donald Trump announce his run for the 2024 presidential election, this despite many Republicans against this idea. What can you tell us? Yeah, we really saw a Donald Trump that was giving a speech talking about his domestic and foreign policy accomplishments during the time that he was president. Uh, this was a pre uh, Donald Trump that we hadn't seen for some time, uh, at least, uh, you know, on behind the podium. He talked a lot about uh, not only his accomplishments, but he also talked about somewhat a vision he has for America's future. You know, he talked about the American dream. He talked about, um, you know, soon we will be a great nation, uh, national greatness, glory. He talked about hope. Um, and then, uh, you know, he didn't really go into that kind of conversation and discussion about the stolen election of 2020. Uh, but he did sort of say that, um, you know, uh, regarding the criticism that perhaps he had faced during the midterms, that it was the quote unquote Trump back candidates that uh, didn't really do so well. First, he said that it was a quote Trump back candidate that ultimately finally flipped the House just an hour ago. And then he said that what we don't know is that the people that I backed, uh, the media doesn't talk about it. It was 222 wins and only 22 losses. So he sort of wanted to get that out there. And then he was facing criticism for making this announcement before the Georgia runoffs between Rafael Warnock and Herschel Walker, uh, because some Republicans were concerned that it would be a referendum on him. He 
put that in his speech as well. He said, right now, our focus for now should be on Georgia and Herschel Walker, giving Herschel Walker an endorsement. <laughs> so, you know, whether or not that's a good thing in 2022, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But we already know that Donald Trump really does back Herschel Walker. Uh, uh, regardless of the speech. Right. Uh, so, you know, it was a very upbeat speech. It was something that um, I think his supporters are going to be very excited about. Right. Um, what comes next is whether or not this is going to continue, this version of Donald Trump is going to continue. Yeah. Absolutely. Susan, thank you so much for bringing us all the latest on that. Of course, for more on this, we're now being joined by Karen Clark, co-founder of Free pressfail.com thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast thank you for having me we just heard uh, Donald Trump's address from Florida where he announced his candidacy for the 2024 presidential run he has made some scathing remarks as well as talked about his accomplishments uh, his administration's accomplishments as well how did you assess his uh, address I, I think this was Trump in his prime this is the Donald Trump that that won 2016 he was out there, he was funny. He was critical of his future opponent, Joe Biden, and uh, very inspiring about this, about what America can be and what America should be and what it was under his presidency, which was great. And it was awesome to hear him speak like that with such confidence. I think this is a Trump we haven't seen since the 2016 cycle. One shares that opinion uh, with you, but he also did say that he, under his administration, dealt with immigration, American energy, independence, also highlighting that America was outdoing China in every, uh, in every aspect. Now, he did not touch on the 2020 election being rigged, but he did say that China may have had a role in the 2020 election because America was outdoing China in every aspect. How do you assess that? Yeah, I think he addressed it in a way that that really only Trump can. And it was partially a joke, but had such weight to it, because I think a lot of Americans do feel similarly that China might have had some impact on the 2020 election. If not some grander scheme, they had a huge impact with COVID. And COVID is the reason that the mail-in ballots happened in 2020. That was unprecedented. And those delivered a victory for Joe Biden. Um, so I think he joked about it, but I think Americans are happy to hear like, yes, that's true. They did have way too much of an impact on our election in 2020 and someone has to say it. And of course, it's going to be Trump. I think he just reminded us he's that guy. He will always say what what other people are not saying. Now, of course, his address was replete with digs at the current administration and, of course, President Joe Biden saying that Ukraine would have never happened if he were president. Also saying that America had been humiliated and weakened under the current administration, saying that we now have a president that falls asleep at global conferences. So how do you assess this? That is an undeniable truth. Unfortunately, Joe Biden is a laughingstock on the world stage. Ironically, they told us he would restore a, a place for America on the world stage that we would be so much more well-respected with Joe Biden. But he is out there, like Trump mentioned, falling asleep at summits and calling, uh, thanking the wrong country and saying the wrong names all of the time. It's very embarrassing. And I, I don't know what else to say except it, it is completely true. All right, Ms. Karen Clark, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast with all your insights on this.